What's up, YouTube? Jimmy the Kid Zero Zero here. Sorry it's been ages, but I'm back with another se uh, another episode of my segment Zeros to Heroes. Um, I'm really quite tired, and I can't think of enough to say to justify making two videos. So I'm gonna do these two cards in the one video. Sorry for being lazy, but I figured I'd just get straight to it. So let's forget about Yokai for now, and talk about Smashing Horn. This uh, the theme of this video is versus Dino Rabbit. As I said, it would be in Zero to Hero Two. Um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. Smashing Horn, uh, this card reads, if I don't drop it, uh, when a monster effect or trap card is activated that negates the normal summon or special summon of a monster or monsters, negate the activation and destroy it. This card first jumped into my mind because all of a sudden, of course it is good versus the, the solemn judgment and the solemn warnings that inevitably are going to be played in every single deck. However, playing this card would be very situational versus them. However, Dino Rabbit has now been playing, say, Triple Lagia, and they get out Lagia a lot. So this card becomes a lot more relevant. Um, originally, when I first put this up as a candidate for my segment, I thought it was going to be a lot better than it actually was, because I thought this would work versus Lagia and Solemn Judgment whenever they were activated, simply because they contain the effect that special summons, much like when Solemn Warning can negate something in that, in that fashion. However, it doesn't, that did limit its uses for me, but I still feel that this really gains a lot of power. Uh, the one place which I really enjoy playing this is in Zectus, because ultimately when your opponent plays a Lagia versus your Insector deck, often case, if they do not have a warning face down, you summon any Insector with a, with a Hornet available, they will have to trip off that Lagia to negate the summon. Where That's when your smashing, uh, your smashing Horn really comes into play. It is, again, very situational, but when it gets off, it's really useful. It really costs your opponent quite a lot. It doesn't cost you anything. And it, against a Solemn Judgment, it can half your opponent's life points into nothing. Yes, Dark Bribe saves you from things like that, and Dark Bribe is probably better to run than this. But ultimately, the fact that you can have this set, you can summon... I have a Dragonfly handy, actually. Ah, Centipede. You can summon the Centipede, Lagia responds, and you can say this. You can say no to the Lagia, outright destroying it. Leaving your centipede free to start popping the back row that didn't activate in response to you. Uh, it's just crazy like that. I just feel that this card would be really useful against Dino Rabbit. It especially. I mean, you could splash it in if you're feeling risky against a lot of decks. Because, you know, just the amount of stuff that stops stuff. And it seems like Black Horn of Heaven seems to be getting a lot of play recently. So, I mean, this card could be even more useful. But Dino Rabbit, seeing as this card then has five options... Well... Six options, or technically four options, to go off. It's just, it's far more, it's far more valid. Uh, moving on to Mischief of the Yokai. Uh, I had two copies of it, I just can't find my other, co my other copy. This card reads, Each face-up monster on the field loses two levels. I can't read it and show it on the camera at the same time. Until the end phase. You can remove from play this card from your graveyard to select one face-up monster and reduce its level by one until the end phase. This effect cannot be activated the turn this card is sent to the graveyard. So ultimately, this card, when your opponent goes um, double Sabersaurus or double Kaba in an attempt to make Lagia, you can then spring this card, making their, ca making their monsters level 2s. This makes their cards almost invalid because I have yet to face or view a rabbit deck profile where they have actually played Gachi Gachi Kontetsu, and I don't think you'll ever meet a rabbit deck that plays Gachi Gachi Kontetsu because they need the space in the extra anyway. So springing this on them is really useful, and it even works against the tour guide because, let's see, what level 1 Xyzers are there that require 2 materials? None. Who plays them? Nobody. Because they don't exist. So this card wrecks any power play rabbit deck has, it just ultimately means that, say, I mean, tour guide, the monsters will still stay there, but if rabbit goes into 2 Sabersaurus, you can then flip this. The Sabersaurus can't make anything. They will swing for 3-8, yes. So Bottomless is more relevant, so I play this alongside Bottomless. It's giving me another option. They will swing for 3-8, but ultimately they will die in the end phase. Your opponent is then at a minus. You know, you can do the math off of that. And also, this card then has the sting, in that I believe after studying it on Pojo, there wasn't really a consensus, but it seemed like people voted more in favour of this. Mischief of the Yokai appears to be a quick effect. So, you can activate it in the grave in response, you know, quickly during your opponent's turn. So, say they go Tour Guide, Tour Bus, or Tour Guide, Tour Guide. You can then spring this in the graveyard and drop that other Tour Guide to a level 2, dropping it by 1. Or, again, to a Sabersaurus, and you will take damage. Again, that is the flaw of this card, which is why it isn't played. All these cards in Zeros to Heroes are flawed. But it's the ultimate fact that you can then spring this a second time in the grave. It's... 
unexpected by novice players. It's expected by non-novice players, but there's not much they can do. So I don't believe you can crow this. I think crow only works on monsters. I never actually read that far into crow. But it's the very fact that this can just sit in the graveyard and go, I'm waiting for your next rabbit because I'm going to mess you up. It's that imminent threat that will then mean better players are more reluctant to play rabbit, which means you can then play that advantage in your favour. So the threat of this sitting in the graveyard means their next exceeds play will die as long as you're intelligent enough. I don't mean that sound derogatory or anything like that. Intelligent enough to activate it in response at the correct time. And as long as they don't have outs. Because I don't know how many things there are that can negate this card's activation in the graveyard. But we'll see. Either way, guys, that is about all I have to say for these two cards. Um, again, it was quite short for each one. But I hope this has given you some val valuable insight. If any of you have actually playtested these cards or go on to playtest them because of this video, please let me know. I'd love to hear how these work out for you because I I don't really want to take the risk in testing them. I'm still, tr I'm still testing Kaiser Coliseum. That worked really well. But I don't have the space to test these myself being a rabbit player anyway. Uh, and my meta doesn't really run enough of the decks that this would hit. My locals meta anyway. So if you guys could test these out or have been testing them out, please let me know how they've gone. Uh, as usual, like, con comment and subscribe. Uh, I should be going, hopefully, into the next stage of Underworld 6667's uh, competition soon. So stay tuned for the next uh, my next episode of that. And if you could like that as well, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the comment box below, or I'll see you on some of my other videos. Have a good one, folks.